Alright guys, welcome back to another episode of Naked Exposure. So if you follow my channel, you'll know that I've talked about the Olympus X day before and I kind of gave my first impressions on this camera probably about three months ago now. Um, I purchased this thing just before lockdown happened, which was kind of a funny time. You know, I didn't realise we that was going to be happening, but I'm so glad that I got this camera for that happening because since I've got this camera, it's been basically the only camera I've shot for the entire lockdown. So everything's been recorded on this camera. I've gotten such a crazy close bond with this camera. I take it everywhere. I constantly have a roll of film loaded in it and it's usually been color negative. And my overall experience of it has been, I really, really like this camera and it's definitely not for everybody. It can have some drawbacks, you know, which I'm gonna cover. But overall, I think it is a superb camera for the price it is and for how old it is as well. So starting with the feeling and the look of the camera, I think it's safe to say that it's a small camera, you know, it holds the title for the smallest rangefinder in the world along with the Contax T um, and it's an incredibly small camera for the, you know, the, the features you're getting like the aperture, uh, manual aperture adjustments and manual focusing, it's so, so dinky, it fits in every kind of pocket um, and it's not, it's not obtrusive, you know, it's not in the way, but something I think that kind of holds it back because of that size is that building materials aren't exactly amazing it's just a sturdy plastic but because it's so small so you know compact it, it does give me the fear sometimes if i was to accidentally put some weight on it or crush it in my jacket against something that it would crack the shell um i've not had that experience yet but you know i've dinged it a lot i've had it in my jacket and hit it off tables and stuff and it's got a few scuffs but no cracks over the surface but i think that's just something to keep in mind it's not the strongest camera, you know, there's a lot of point and shoot cameras that are a lot more sturdily made, but uh, I wouldn't complain, you know, I've, I've definitely felt cheaper plastics. Along with the, you know, the small size of it obviously means a very small rangefinder window. So the rangefinder window is actually the thing which allows you to, when you're focusing, see the tiny image in the center of the frame, which is like the ghost image, it's the rangefinder patch. It helps you focus using ghost images. Now, because it is such a small camera, the rangefinder patch is small and can be very faded. To get around this, you know, you can use the duct tape method, which is what I've done. You get a bit of duct tape, tiny little square, and put it in the very center of the viewfinder. It helps it be more contrasty and able to see uh, in more situations. Still not perfect, still very faint. Um, maybe I have a bad model. Maybe it's not got the best patch, but um, <laughs> compared to real rangefinder cameras, it's not close. But that being said, considering how limited options you have on the market for something like this, it does the job. And I've not had many shots where I've missed focus on what I actually wanted. So in reality, in real world use, it's you, you don't need more than it. I think it does a really great job. Sometimes it would be ideal if it could see slightly more, um, if it was more contrasty, but it, I can shoot inside. You know, I've shot in bright sunlight. A lot of different situations and it hasn't really let me down it can be a little bit frustrating it can sometimes be really quick to focus about you know half a second but other times it can be a couple seconds to try and really make sure that you've nailed those ghost images overlaying but the overall aesthetic i love it i love the aesthetic of it you know that red button the xa i got this little strap off ebay for like two pounds for it and it works really well you know you put it around your wrist and then you can just tighten it up and you know, I can swing about, if I'm going to do street photography, I can swing about, no problem, and you can just carry it. So when you look at this thing and you see how small it is, and you see how small the optics are, you obviously expect to get lesser image quality. And like, while it's true that an SLR rangefinder is going to give you a lot sharper images, that's just the name of the game, this still gives really surprising results. And I've gotten some really, really nice images. You can get some really nice depth of field. It has really nice color rendition. It's a six element lens in five groups and it's a 35 millimeter 2.8 Zucchio. So on paper, great specifications. You know, six elements, five groups, 2.8 on a tiny little camera this size. And in reality, you get really great results. Um, as I've touched on another video, I have a Konica Big Mini point and shoot camera. You get sharper results with that. I have a Canon 81, sharper results, but unless you're shooting black and white film, which you can really see the grain, color negative is where this thing really shines. And I think that's where you cannot tell the difference. If you're using it for Instagram, if you're using it online, you know, if you're printing small images, you won't be able to see the difference. Now, when you're printing big sizes, like A4, A3, 
you're gonna see the difference. And maybe A3, you should not be printing pictures A3 with this, but that goes for a lot of 35 millimeter cameras. So for the nitty gritty technical stuff, I've been using my Plustex scanner to scan all the images that I've taken on the S Olympus. This thing came into my possession really recently and since lockdown, it's been superb. I really love this scanner. The colors I've been getting have been great. Um, and the film stock I've been shooting the whole lockdown is Fujifilm Superior 400 and Kodak Gold. Those are the two I've been switching about and I've been loving the results. You know, it's saved me a lot of money compared to expensive pro film stocks. And I think the results that I've gotten color wise and stuff, I think those film stocks speak out a lot louder than the price tag they're at. Um, for Superior 400, I've been shooting at 125 ISO, a bit of a strange ISO to shoot it at. And been just getting it developed normally for 400 ISO. So, you know, it's basically like a two stop over exposure just because I wanted to give it a lot of light so I could have really dense negatives. Because for scanning, at home scanning anyway, I found that if I shoot film at box speed, I can sometimes get quite thin negatives, which can give me a bit of strange color casting um, and doesn't give me a lot of dynamic range. So, yeah, 125 ISO and Superior 400 and Kodak uh, Ultramax, I've been shooting at 200 ISO. Obviously because of the pandemic and the situation in the world and how crazy everything is, my images have just been capturing day in the life stuff, has been going to the shops, been photographing, you know, the lead up to the lockdown, the whole, just each step of it and you know, how crazy it's been, an emotional ride for both me and like everyone else. And this has been a really great camera, as I said, to carry about for that because it is not intrusive. People don't mind getting pictures taken with it. It's really small and light to carry and the results I get, I'm super happy with. So yeah, I've just been taking lockdown as a time to reflect on my shooting style, um, what I like to photograph and just trying to really, I've just been trying to come to terms with what it is I want to convey through my imagery because that's something I've, you know, gotten confused by it. So, you know, I'm not, I don't struggle taking pictures. I don't struggle um, finding the motivation to take pictures. These are things that I do a lot but it's bringing it all together in a sort of web of ideas and trying to convey a message or um, a thought that I find quite difficult with photography. I can do it with single images and stuff, but to bring it together into a series or to bring it together into something that works can be a bit difficult. If you're looking for the top, best quality camera, maybe the X8 isn't for you, but if you're looking for something that gives you creative control, that's small and quiet, I couldn't think of a better camera to suggest. Um, if you have the money, actually, if you have the money, the camera I would suggest is the Contax T. I have a friend um, who recently picked one up. He says he's been loving it. I have not got to see that camera, obviously, since lockdown. But um, the Contax T is amazing, but we have to remember that camera is about four times the price of this one. So in terms of a hundred pound camera that you want creative control within a small, the XA is really the thing to go for. I would suggest it um, if you're someone who has been into film photography for a while, has an SLR and that is the only camera you have, you know, you've taken a lot of pictures, you've experimented a lot with it, but you want something that, it's not a hassle to take like an SLR, if I'm taking an SLR I make a day of it or I make it a, a thing, you know, to take the SLR, this can just be your, your pocket companion and it's sort of like, as Matt Day said, which I did see Matt Day's video when he posted that about the XA, he said it was a perfect journal camera and I agree, it's really, it's really great for taking notes and for capturing little moments in your family. But for me, it is a little bit better than a journal camera. I think he likes something that's a bit more quality. Um, you know, you could print bigger with, but for me, I don't really care. This does the job for me. And I would happily make a whole entire photo book just off this, which is exactly what I'm in the works of doing. I'm trying to bring all these images together into something that I think speaks for the moment I am in with my life and also just the moment the world is in, you know, those two things collided. Being in my early 20s plus a pandemic and plus so many crazy things going on in the world with the environment being destroyed and stuff. There's a lot of big events and it's an interesting time to be alive. So I'm just trying to document that and bring it all together into a, a simple idea, constructed pages, you know, something that you can see and get the idea of it's a bit of a mess, but there is hope. I think my final words for the X is having a manual ISO dial is incredibly useful. Having the aperture is incredibly useful. That creative control is powerful. Having, you know, shooting at 2.8 wide open when you're taking a picture of someone or if you're wanting to take a picture on a tripod of a landscape, you can do that. It's the versatility that it offers, which is incredible. You could carry around, you know, one of those little pocket tripods 
this camera and you could shoot anything. You could do long exposures, you could do portraits, you could do um, pictures of buildings, anything you can think of, you'd be able to do it. <laughs> but I've been shooting this camera so much that I think it might also be time to, to try shooting another camera for a bit. You know, three months of just you shooting this camera, I've become very comfortable with it. I know exactly how to work it, what the images look like, but maybe it's time to try my SLR again, see how it compares and if, if this is really the camera I want to be using or if I want something that gives me a bit better quality. That's something I need to decide on and probably something I'll report back in another few months. Um, so if you want to stick around for that, definitely subscribe to my channel and figure out you know my journey with this camera. But overall, it's definitely at my top two cameras I've ever bought. It could be my first. It's it's my camera. It, it really has a place in my heart. I think it, it really works for me and I think it will for a lot of people as well. If photography is a big passion in your life and you always want to have a camera, I think the X8 is the one to go for. So I would highly suggest it. Just make sure you pick up a good deal on eBay and ask the sellers for the condition and how the patch is, because the patch is a very important part of the camera. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. If you have any comments, please leave them down below. Um, if you would subscribe to my channel, I'd greatly appreciate that. Uh, yeah, as I said, my book, I'm trying to work on that just now. So hopefully in the coming weeks, I'll have some progress with that. And yeah, more photography videos coming soon. Thank you for watching.